this show. We see CNN, MSNBC lying at record levels. Uh, Fox News just reporting whatever the police say. We're not even against the police in Ferguson. It's just, it just seems like the age of lies and fraud has kicked into uh, overdrive. And then we see Russia having a convoy blown up by Ukraine last Friday. Uh, we just see unparalleled things happening right now. U.S. armor being sent to the border, a dollar devaluation accelerating. What are your short, medium, and long-term predictions, and what is the state of the world right now, Max Kaiser? Well, I'll give a little background. For the past 30 years, the big Western economies and economies around the world have tried to sustain their growth using only monetary policy. That is to say they've been printing money uh, instead of programs or instead of policies that would increase things like manufacturing. Uh, they've been doing whatever they can to lower the cost for corporations and to make up any shortfalls by just printing money. And right now, in 2014, we see the result of 30 years of monetization fail, a, a huge failure. Uh, so these countries that are really become corpocracies, uh, uh, vehicles for companies, are now battling for remaining world resources uh, have, after having now come to the conclusion that their attempt to aggregate their own pockets purely by printing money, purely by monetary policy, is now at the end game. So they're going to go into a more of a hot war situation. So resources like water, resources like energy, resources like agriculture. And we see this happening in Ukraine. I think Ukraine is an example of what happens when uh, an agriculturally rich country like Ukraine, which also will have a pipeline going through it coming from Russia, Iran, uh, suddenly catches the eye of the expanding Western European and the American forces that are not able to generate any GDP growth in those countries by printing more money. It used to be that if you printed a bunch of money, you could create some GDP growth. Now, the debts are skyrocketing. They keep printing money, but these debts are still going rapidly out of control. So conquest by counterfeit fiat derivative is coming to an end. Yes. So now they're going back to the old-fashioned conquest by military force. Correct. I, I think that's a good summation. So as a result, the, the money from before the world became monetized is coming back into play, and that would mean gold, uh, that form of money. Uh, and I think Bitcoin, which just to follow up on Bitcoin a little bit, Bitcoin is almost digital gold in that sense, in that it has the attributes of gold. There's a limited supply, it's desirable, it's fungible, and it'll be used in this new war. You know, it's interesting, looking at the history, World War I started on horseback, it ended up with the Gatling gun. World War II started with the infantry, it ended up with atomic weapons. World War III, which is what I think we're starting now, is going to start with sanctions, which is a very crude economic warfare technique, and it'll end with cryptocurrencies. In five years' time, will the world financial map will be redrawn due to cryptocurrencies, the, the public ledger that's inherent in a cryptocurrency, and the ability to move hundreds of billions of pounds and dollars around the world effortlessly, frictionlessly, using the blockchain, using cryptocurrency. That's my prediction. World War III will be defined by cryptocurrency, principally Bitcoin. Well, the West engaging in all this economic sabotage is forcing Russia and others into the BRICS. It's forcing them to set up their own financial institutions. Uh, you know, they, That's true. The BRICS They bank, say necessity is the mother of invention. That's right. The BRICS are creating their own bank to counter the IMF. Uh, this is the, called de-dollarization. So the dollar, which has been world reserve currency since World War II, is losing its use on a daily basis. It almost seems like our political elite are destroying our system on purpose. Or is it just pure greed? That's my concern. Is before you had generals and dictators and countries and they made mistakes and things got bad. Now, the suicide bankers you talk about aren't even looking at Russia might nuke us and we're moving tanks up to their borders and breaking deals we had. They just want Ukraine and it's just one more, one more you know, notch in their belt. It, it, it really seems like the type of thing historically that leads to disaster. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme made up of sovereign debt, mostly U.S. sovereign debt. And you know with a Ponzi scheme or a pyramid scheme, in order for it to keep active, you need to expand the base all the time. We know this from Bernie Madoff. We know this from classic Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes. So the American economy realizes is a Ponzi scheme. that the way to increase the debt of the U.S. sovereign Ponzi scheme fast 
is to launch another war because war is incredibly capitalist. But I guess we've run out of like well, they've run third world countries to blow up. So now let's start it with somebody with 20 million nukes. Exactly. I mean, now, 20, they're, nukes. now they're going at, now they're going up against somebody who has their own energy resources, who has uh, obviously atomic weapons, uh, but they have an enormous uh, legion of hackers of cyber hackers. I mean, Russia who was the country we're talking about is uh, known around the world for having extraordinarily adept uh, cyber hackers and, and technologists. They're in bed with Iran and China through the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. They want to get a pipeline going from that region into Europe. So who's Merkel going to go with? Is she going to side with uh, Russia, China, Iran? Which so bottom they, line, the, the bravada and the arrogance of the West could be our undoing. Our elite has become completely disconnected from reality. Look at Obama. In one minute, how do you see an ending? Where is the dollar going? It's like uh, in casinos, they, there's a strategy called the Martingale betting system, where you have a losing bet, but you double down on that losing bet over and over and over again, thinking you're going to win. I think America is doubling down once again on another losing bet, this Russia invasion, uh, more or less. And I think that will be the last bet. I think after that, America goes belly up. The dollar loses world reserve status, and commodities, oil, food, Prices in this country are set to double and triple in the next three to four years. All right, Max Kaiser, thank you so much for being with us. I uh, hope we can hang out some tonight. Uh, folks, we're going to go back to break now and come back with my detailed report on geoengineering straight ahead, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. We don't know how all this is going to end, but one thing's for sure, this is not a boring time to be alive. This is one of those times in history where everything's coming down, everything is happening right now. This is the time to be informed, the time to be involved, and the time to be spreading the word about the info war. Because if you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back, humanity. Alex Jones here. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to break down a subject so incredibly important, I don't even feel worthy to bring you this information. I want to beg all of you listening and watching out there as we simulcast this on television to go out for yourselves, write down some notes, and then use a major search engine to look up these mainstream media articles, university studies, and governmental reports for yourself. Since the early 1990s, it's been partially declassified, and I'm about to go over it, that major Western governments have been secretly adding to jet fuel a whole host of radioactive isotopes, aluminum dioxide, the list goes on and on, to manipulate the weather on this planet. And when the general public brings it up, they just say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, despite the fact that most of this is hiding in plain view. This is similar to back in 1996-97 with my NSA whistleblower connections, many of which are now public, Wayne Madsen, James Bamford, and others, that the National Security Agency was illegally spying on everything Americans did for social control. 
Now, folks would call that a conspiracy theory then. It's now known fact. I want to give viewers and radio listeners a chance to write down some key terms and look this up. They kept the Manhattan Project secret. They kept the Tuskegee experiment secret. They've kept literally hundreds of different projects secret until the establishment feels like telling us they were doing it later. In the public documents dealing with weather manipulation, geoengineering, or terraforming, they say it's being done for our own good and to repair the atmosphere. But the scientists, meteorologists, astrophysicists, and others that I've talked to have said what they're spraying and releasing would actually eat holes in the atmosphere and damage the soils of the planet. So let me now race through for you the over 50 or so documents I have here in front of us admitting the geoengineering program that's going on. Council on Foreign Relations, 2008. Geoengineering Workshop on Planetary Scale Geoengineering. This is already going on. It's a multi-hundred page report. Go read it. Admitting this is going on. But then they make jokes on the nightly news when I talk about this. Here's a, another report out of Wired Magazine. Earth dimming skies before and after. Admitting that condensation trails from jet aircraft since the early 1990s has dimmed the planet upwards of 30%. That's from 2009. Pretty darn important. Here's another article. Can a million tons of sulfur dioxide combat climate change? That's their cover for this. And Bill Gates gets billions in taxpayer money a year to carry out these secret projects. He's just one part of it. Here's an Infowars.com article with the link to the National Patent Office. Spraying the skies, 1975, U.S. patent for powdered contrail generation. And you look at what they're releasing now in the atmosphere, what's being picked up, it's exactly that. The, the airlines don't even know. It's at the major jet fuel manufacturers. There's more than 50 patents on this alone for geoengineering. BBC, you notice I'm going through one stack here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine more stacks. BBC, why the sun seems to be dimming. Man-made chemtrails. This is a key article from the Pentagon. Weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather by 2025, 1996. Dealing with manipulation of the weather. Department of Defense weather programs breaking down the control of hurricanes, everything that's been going on since the 60s, declassified in 2004. Ben Livingston, the father of weather weapons, was interviewed on radio and TV by me. Those interviews are posted at Infowars.com today from almost 10 years ago. This is key information, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue. Here's another report. Oral evidence taken before the Science and Technology Committee 2010 in Congress dealing with the geoengineering that's going on. Here's another, unilateral geoengineering. Briefing notes, again, this is put out by Stanford University who first certified the weather control in 1968 with Ben Livingston, not declassified till the mid 2000s. Let's continue to another key document, indirect and semi-direct aerosol campaign. This is put out by the federal government and more than a dozen major universities dealing with how they are manipulating the weather currently and controlling it. You notice all the droughts, the rest of it. Just like I told you how the NSA operated with precision, I'm telling you from public documents that I have read and interviewing the top experts what's happening. In 1992, a Nobel Prize was won by Paul Crutzen on how to control the weather worldwide with these systems, okay? And you read what he got the prize for. Turned out this was work he did decades before. His plan got implemented. He won the prize because he, he claims it's to fix the ozone holes. Why aren't you telling the public then about this project if it's supposedly to fix the ozone holes? We've interviewed the physicists, the atmospheric experts. It's pure bull. They're changing our atmosphere. House of Commons, Science and Technology Committee, the regulation of geoengineering, 2010, calling for banning it, talking about how dangerous it is. There's UN treaties on it from 1979. But again, none of this exists 
even though I'm giving you all the documentation. I told you in 1996 that 